what was it you actually said to me on LinkedIn the other day that was quite funny about um, everything? Everything I say is always funny, mate. On LinkedIn, <laughs> so that's follow, review, and share the podcast about podcasting. We're back. This is the tricky episode two of yes. Follow, Review and Share. I think it's fair to say, Neil, that the first one was really good and now we're in a tricky position yeah. where I know got something to live up to. Talk about pressure, right? It's amazing. We actually had listener download numbers on the previous episode. Yeah. Follow, Review and Share is sponsored by Libsyn. First episode was great. If you've not heard it, have a listen to it. We got some great stuff yeah. on there. We got an award-winning podcaster, Jess Robinson. She so, was great. So, 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 so talented. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, star of stars in your ears. We also had our global community correspondent, Steph, on there yep. talking about the brilliant pod, pod Rev Day uh, that she developed and she's created. And we had a discussion about mics. Do you know, the one thing we didn't particularly talk about on mm. that last episode was marketing which is why episode two tricky episode number two is all about marketing we've got a couple of well we've got a whole bunch of people who really know what they're talking about we're going to have a chat with dan knowlton who will tell you all about video and 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 and, and just just he's just a font of knowledge and yeah. um before that we have the guys from Get Savvy Club. They help you attract... Well, basically, they are marketing gurus. Um, they have the Marketing Made Easy podcast, which is one of the podcasts I produce. They are my clients, so I have to be, uh, obviously, very polite to them because they pay me my wages. Uh, Neil, you don't have to be so polite, so it's okay. No, and I absolutely plan not to be polite to them whatsoever in any way, shape or form. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm sure that I'll do my best to uh, not offend them and damage your working relationship with them. Follow, review and share featuring Neil Velio from Podnose Podcasting and Pete Allen from Carrot Cruncher Media. Anyway, should we get them on the show? Because that's what they're here for, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. The podcast that they do is called Marketing Made Easy. They are Anna and Anita. Let's crack on with it. Big topic of conversation are team shows in podcasts. You know, one of those questions that a lot of people ask, should I do it on my own or should I do it with somebody else? What happens? And then when you throw somebody else into the mix, that makes it so much more complicated because rather than having one personality, you've got two personalities in there. Is that not true, Neil Velio? Oh, my God. I mean, it can be an absolute nightmare, to be honest with you. I mean, both you and I will know from our radio background, you know, from the days that we were talking in studios and you'd get a guest in or you'd get a member of staff come in and you got to sort of make some content. And unless you got that sort of chemistry straight away, it can take a lot of work and a lot of direction, which is why some shows sound better than others if they got people that are talented in other ways, maybe off air in coaching and directing the on air talent. But yeah, you know. It can be an absolute minefield. Sometimes we get lucky and you get people with natural chemistry. And I believe that might be, you know, that might be covered off by the guests that you're about to introduce. I believe that is something that they're benefiting from. But yeah, it really can be an absolute stress if you don't know what you're doing. It can. You know, you, you referred to the radio days then. And I think we, um, you know, both of us have been in partnerships that we've not been particularly happy with as presenters or producers over the years. And then also, I think we've also been in partnerships that we have been really happy with. And when you are by a radio station manager, you're you're given somebody to work with and it's like, right, you're going to work with that person, create chemistry. That's really, really tricky to do. Yeah. Um, with podcasts, obviously, we pick our people who we want to work with, which is the positive. That's a big thing. Now, uh, you did sort of allude to it there that we do have guests on this, and we do. And these guys do a show called Marketing Made Easy. It's Anna Geary. It's Anita Baldwin. Stay quiet, guys. Stay quiet. I'm going to play a clip of your show. That's why they're here. They want the promotion. That's what they want. And you will hear... Um, comedy in there and you will hear also just a lovely natural thing that they've got going on no anyway, that's quite fast paced wasn't it <laughs> what's yeah. wrong with me today <laughs> 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 calm down you've been drinking coffee you don't even drink coffee do you don't drink coffee maybe i should start yeah. anyway have a fantastic day evening whatever time of day it is when you listen to this and um we'll catch up with you on the next one remember give yourself self-love Peace out. <laughs> Not when your kids are in. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> that was Marketing Made Easy. And that was the end of their last episode that they did. Um, and, uh, yeah, 
it was uh, it was an interesting show, and it always is. I'm already a fan. I've got to say the bit about self love. Just for me, that is that's an immediate follow button hit there. Absolutely, absolutely, and they do it naturally, and that's the way it works. And um, well, Anna and Anita. First of all, it gets wild, Neil. Trust me, it has to be edited because they will talk over each other. Hello, Anna. Hi, you all right? <laughs> and hello, Anita. Hello. This is fantastic. So obviously you guys, you decided you wanted to work together. You weren't like in our radio station days where we were put together with people that we didn't like. And essentially your podcast is about marketing. You you run the Get Savvy Club. You are, well, in fact, you tell us what you are, Anna. So what we do is we help our clients attract clients using social media in less time. Obviously, people can get the podcast for free and listen into that, which is marketing made easy. But we always also do online programs, one-to-one coaching, yeah, masterminds and whatnot. So all online, really helping people attract clients using social media, mostly female coaches, therapists, entrepreneurs and whatnot. Yeah, you have a very, very defined audience, which is one of the things that we talk about uh, on podcasts. And it's really, really important to niche down and really get down there. And that obviously is one of the big things that you guys talk about with you doing a marketing podcast as well. So you work together, you have this brilliant chemistry. Anita, how did it come about? How did you do that? How did you how did you decide that you wanted to do a podcast? And how did you decide that it was Anna that you were going to do the podcast with? Well, I love how you think it had anything to do with Manita. But anyway, continue. You answer the- Anna, this is my bit. Could you be quiet, please? <laughs> There's a the chemistry we talked about. <laughs> well, we, we started working together after meeting on the school run. We had uh, daughters in the same school. So we like, were nodding acquaintances, not what you'd call friends even. But then we were on the same you know, networking circuit and we, we had a plan for a side hustle, which turned into a full-blown business. And Anna had been on a podcasting course like a couple of years before and said, right, we should do a podcast and um I just said yeah fine and so we we had this massive silver suitcase with all the podcasts and equipment in that went and whenever we went anywhere to talk at events and things we took it with us and then we brought it home again and we never even opened it <laughs> so it was the best travel Still podcast. now in my office yeah. Yeah. yeah and then um and then she said right we're going to do this now and uh, found you pete to produce it who kind of said right just chat and i'll turn it into a podcast and that's what we do so we get the fun easy bit we didn't think about whether we could work well together or whether we, we'd be any good we just kind of cracked on and and actually i think when i listen to the early ones i think we have got better definitely and we are a we teach people, you know, get start now, get perfect later, get good on the job. And that's exactly what we've done, I hope. Absolutely. Yeah. I think what, you, what you've done is you've got that natural chemistry and, and it's so important. And that's the kind of stuff you can't teach. You've got that natural chemistry. Can't buy you, it, can you, Pete? You can't buy it, Anna. You can't. No. It's not even for sale. It really <laughs> isn't. And it's uh, and that's that's really obvious. But what you've done is you've refined it and you've gone, OK, so, yeah, we're having conversations with people. But as well as doing that, we're doing a show. So to some extent, we are playing characters and we have to get our characters to cut through as personalities because that's what people buy into, isn't it? It's the it's the personality behind the, the podcast. The fact that it's about marketing is, well, it's it's that's important, obviously, because that's the niche and that's the reason people listen. But why do they listen to your podcast over the other podcasts that happen to be around and covering the same subject? You know, why why do they pick you guys? Yeah, that's why we really wanted to because we have two types of um, episodes. As you know, we have the guest episode, which is always a Tuesday where we bring somebody in that can teach, you know, their spin on marketing or we've got an interesting story in the business world that can inspire our listeners. But then we also have the Get Savvy Quickie episode, which are Thursdays, which are a lot shorter, but are real actionable tips because we wanted people to actually listen. And the amount of times I've seen a great headline for, or like a great looking podcast and thought, oh, wow, jumped on to un- like basically learn something. And it's no, there's no learning in there at all. It's just waffling on about them or very egotistical. So, yeah, we wanted to make sure that actually people got some value from it as well as listening to us like whittling on. But um, the thing is what you said as well about like chemistry and stuff, like I think me and Anita, like, well, especially me, I don't mind like the cringe, you know, like I say, you get thrown together with people or if things work or don't like that's part of the the fun. Like if we've had guests on and we've just struggled, it doesn't happen very often to be fair. We're quite lucky, but I actually enjoy it. It's quite quite funny to be stuck in the cringe and the awkwardness of it, (laughs) trying to move it along and whatnot. 
That was going to be my question is like you mentioned about how you started out, you were doing just, you know, essentially the guest of the week kind of style in the format that a lot of podcasters do. And then you started doing these little quickies where you're giving out tips. I mean, how much test and measure did, you know, res- was that sort of stemming from? Was it a case of you actively went, you know what, looking at the stats, looking at the way things are going, this is what we need to do? Or is it just literally as organic as the rest? You just went, you know what, let's just whack out a bit more content. Why not? I did go on that track training course didn't I so I did learn some stuff from there so I I did learn that you have to have some kind of um, structure so that your listener kind of um, knows that what kind of what's coming I guess and also about launching it so we were lucky enough to get like number one podcast in the marketing uh, section uh, number 13 in business so it was it's not completely thrown together so the guests we make sure that they're of a certain not doesn't they don't have to be like super successful or anything but they do need to have a story or something that they can bring to it Um, and we always ask two questions at the end of every podcast which is like what makes them savvy because we're the get savvy club and also for a book recommendation that we do then give away to uh, one of our listeners if they tag and share it on social media and things so there there is a loose structure around it but in terms of what you say there do we do we measure do we look do we no we don't overanalyze the data because you know it's not it's not really relevant as long as we're enjoying it and we're getting feedback that it's working we'll just continue to do it this way I think I think we just create what we'd like to listen to so our ideal clients are women you know not dissimilar to us women running their own businesses want to get further faster and use social media to do it and that's what we help them with so I kind of think if I'd like to listen to it then other people will as well it's very much like uh, I guess I guess a salesy type word would be and I don't really like it is the funnel it's the free stuff that people go oh uh, that's get savvy club let's find out what else they do you know as far as as far as that measurement is concerned you guys enjoy doing it and obviously you're exposing yourself to hundreds of new people every episode that you release because um we're doing really well from a from a listener perspective as well from a a actual number of downloads point of view and uh yeah and and obviously you're giving that value to your uh, to your community which is which is what we speak about a lot on this podcast and neil this is what these guys do naturally is connecting the dots between their audience and what they're trying to achieve within their own space is essentially what you're saying they've they've really identified they've they've sat there and they're they're literally practicing what they preach yeah totally yeah these these guys these guys are marketers they have these uh, unique and wild personalities and you'll hear more of it if you listen to their podcast obviously and um it but it's like all of the best shows and like all of the best personalities and i wouldn't say this i would say this if they weren't here as well obviously i think they've got that thing where it can sound a little bit wild it can sound a little bit unplanned but they are savvy and it is planned although not perhaps in the traditional manner where you sit down with a show plan beforehand and you say right what are you going to ask what am i going to ask how's this going to work and you know occasionally as well and i can speak uh, i hear the unedited content as well you know we do take quite a bit of stuff out of here and we're very aware of the the personalities on the show and we're aware of you know anita's loves and likes about the world and and anna's as well (laughs) and we're we're also aware that if you give anna too much string she'll strangle herself (laughs) so as an editor it's my job to make sure that she doesn't edit that bit out neil the thing is, I love doing the podcast. I really enjoy it. And I think if I had to sit down and plan what the questions were, it would just suddenly become like work go, to it? me. Yeah, because yeah, our, our, one of our, mot- our motto at the Get Savvy Club is let it be easy. So we obviously help people with their social media. And the, the type of people that we, I'd say, like, usually it's women of a certain age that are looking to use social media to um, help their business grow by getting more clients. And they just want it to be easy. They don't want to spend forever on it. So... Everything that we do needs to lend itself to being easy as well. So trying to be as easy as possible. So that's what we incorporate into our podcast too. Like, yes, we we make sure that the guests aren't rubbish. And, you know, we do we do care about the audio being a certain level and it being produced. And, you know, I, I'll admit, I do go on sometimes. I might waffle or I might go off on a randomest, randomest tangent. So it's great to have Pete there to just cut some of that out. So it's not all on there. But if yeah, like Anita said, it's the fact that it isn't so planned is what makes it what makes it fun and also means we can actually fit it in with everything else that we do. You know, it is only a small part of our, you know, working week. 
his crane. Yeah, pockets. absolutely. And we had that agreement up front because it was identified that Anna particularly could be a bit wild and go off on on massive tangents. Now I've always said, uh, as a as an editor, yeah, go off on as many tangents as you want. Go completely wild because to get to the golden stuff, sometimes you need to go off on tangents. I think it works. I think it works really nicely. As far as you know, when if if someone's listening to this and they're thinking, oh, I'm going to start a podcast i don't know whether to do it with you know myself and and uh, and a co-host or uh, you know there's i guess with a co-host there's that big splitting of work how does that work for you guys how do you you know as far as the the guests and prepping the guests and sorting the guests out and doing all that kind of stuff how does that workflow work for you um, it's really most... I'm evenly split and Anna does it all. <laughs> yeah, I, I basically do all that, but I, lo- but I enjoy doing it. So I don't mind because I'm, I love just talking to people anyway. So it's not really work because all I'm doing is just having conversations with people that I'm in- like, think are interesting or would be interested in the podcast. And I don't overthink it. I don't, I've been on things before where people have said all these things that you should do and try and get these guests. And I've had people say as well, wow, how did you get that person on your guest? How did you get, and I'll literally just voice note him on Instagram and go, oh, yeah, I've got this podcast. Um, obviously, make it. I obviously like tell them that it's a number one uh, marketing podcast in the UK because it did hit number one <laughs> at one point. It did. Um, so, and, and got then, a then, of it. Then I just, like, yeah, I used to do um, sales and stuff before. So I think rather than hiding behind a whole ton of emails, just mm. literally go straight to the source voice note them, be a bit cheeky, maybe even send a video, go, right, I want you on your podcast, how do we make this happen? And just making it happen. So it's actually a lot easier than people would lead you to believe that it is. It's one of the other great things about podcasts. It's expanding your network and connecting with people who you may otherwise not connect with or you may otherwise not have a reason to connect with. And and out of that, out of out of expanding your network comes great things, as we all know. We absolutely love, me and Anita do, before we even work together, a lady called Denise Duffield Thomas, um, Mm. who writes entrepreneurial books and things. And we would never, we got her on the podcast, but we would never have got like an hour, hour, hour and a half of her undivided time if we didn't have a podcast to invite her on to. So it does open doors and opportunities. But what I would say about if you're deciding to do a podcast on your own or with someone else, it's exactly the same as if you're looking to go into business with somebody else. You've got to have the same values and the same vision so me, me and Anita are very different people in terms of what I can't understand why she likes some of the things she does she doesn't understand why I do but essentially we've got like talking the about same... baking and football yeah I don't know why anyone would ever watch a bake-off like I don't get it and she doesn't get like why you would ever watch football but uh, to be fair though we do have the same like goals we with get savvy club we've got the same goals the same places we want to get work ethic we're both same work ethic massively important um and we just know we're going to show up as well because podcasts people go i want my own podcast and a lot of the time it's very egotistical as to why they want their they don't have like a reason why they just like the idea of having a podcast thank you it's yeah. important, you know, it's important to know that you are going to show up and you are going to do it. It's embarrassing to start a podcast, I think, and stop. Like, that's Brilliant. probably why it took so long to get started. Mm. But, yeah, it's more work than people. It's not work because it's fun for us, but it is, it's a commitment. So, and if you haven't got a, a true reason why, then I think you'll struggle to start and continue with a podcast. Round yeah. of- on that Absolutely, one. yeah. I think we've always said that it's about passion. It's about following yeah. that passion, and then great things come out of that. And you have to worry about the statistics uh, at a later date. Even don't even worry about. Don't even look at the statistics yeah, look at the with. for at least the first few months of your episode production. But what I want to say, actually, girls, is that in terms of the fact that you're obviously marketing experts, this I think for me is the really interesting part of this. Obviously, you've got you, you're nailed down on how you're producing the podcast themselves. You've obviously got a great producer in Pete who's here sort of guiding you through and and being that extra critical ear for your episode production itself. But in terms of getting it out there, forget the actual production house. What about sort of getting that show out there so that the right people are finding it and the right people are connecting with it? What do you think, as marketing experts, most podcasters get wrong? Forget to let everyone know that it's out there. <laughs> they don't have a strong social media presence. They don't have an email list that they can tell people about. They don't. 
have a reason or a hook why people would listen into it. There's well, God, it's just that marketing it's in that general. If isn't you it? build it, they will come. So I'll do a podcast and then everyone will find me. And actually, no, they won't. You need to go out and show like anything in business, you need to go out and tell people what it is and why it's what's in it for them. And then they might come. So what are you would you say then that you are doing differently that they need to start doing? Sharing it on your social medias on a consistent basis, not just every now and then, um, sending it to your email list, making sure what, one of the things that we do well, Pete does, is um, we create a vanity cover for our guests as well, send that to them along, make it easy for them to promote it on their side by having their own individual link to their particular podcast episode, along with a nice picture of themselves with our branding on it. So it's easy for them to, and be, be tagging them into things as well be tagging the guests into into it nothing's like groundbreaking i don't suppose but it's, it's just actually remembering to do it which to be fair early up the first few we were great at then we we've drifted in and out of being great at it and not so great at it we are getting a lot better at making sure that we promote each in each individual episode because once people get hooked in and they listen to one they tend to we're there then aren't we we've subscribed and we're in uh, but i yeah. think the launch piece is really important for people because people take so long creating their podcast doing it all getting it out there and then they get disappointed that no one's listening to it and they haven't hit an, any number in the charts or done anything but if they don't prepare and launch properly then yeah it will there's i don't even know how many podcasts are out there so the only way that you can make people listen to yours is by doing what you can uh, we did get featured on podbean as well podcast isn't just something you put out in a moment in time but it's a resource so pete mentioned earlier on that you can it's some free stuff you can give to people and it's there it's a library of everything so when you meet people you could talk about your podcast and everything you can you know like we always refer to old episodes like an ideal client episode or when we do um one to, with our clients that have worked with us and got amazing Meet results the savages episodes got, are gold. yeah and so number we refer, 1850 and <laughs> yeah el geeko remembers all the numbers but we refer <laughs> back to them all the time so it's like a, a library of resources you can use again and again it's not just i've done this episode let me tell you about it but it's just a whole library of resources that gives you kind of gravitas and shows that you're in it for the long game and that you know your stuff and it's just an awesome resource to have out there so obviously you guys you're you're big proponents of podcasting that's really obvious and it comes across in the sort of body of work that you're putting out and, and the the input that you're putting into it. it's really professional stuff i mean how important do you think for a brand that isn't doing podcasting at the moment how important do you think a consideration it needs to be for a brand in well, 2021, 2022 going forward to uh, to have in their portfolio? I think like with any marketing, it needs to be something you enjoy. I keep seeing people actually that do similar things to us and they, they're oh, getting a podcast out and I think, do you want to have a podcast out or are you just doing it to tick a box because everybody seems to think that you should have because you do, you're in this world and you're doing this thing. So I would, I would consider it bad to make sure you've got the right people because I don't think... Er podcasting is for everyone i mean you've got to be able to hold a conversation you've got to be able to speak to people you've got to be able to you know ask interesting questions go places other people perhaps wouldn't go not you know, talk you about yourself all the time Lots yeah of people exactly I see doing it. I think, how are you ever going to ask a question about anyone else i would consider it but don't because it's not a quick win and you've got to love it you've got to almost like do it even if you even if you you weren't going to get anything from it because we enjoy it anyway we get to speak to people that we wouldn't get to speak to but yeah no doubt we do get business from it and it supports our business in many ways but but yeah i would, I would consider it but i would definitely say get somebody like pete to yeah. actually produce it for you because it's soul destroying to try and work out how to i mean pete's been in like radio and, and in this industry for like 25 years or whatever so it makes sense to get somebody that knows what they're doing rather than you attempt to faff about and do it and who wants that to suck up all your time as well yeah. <laughs> you know, do the stuff you're good at yeah absolutely and uh, i thank you for that and also you could use neil, neil Velio as well who's also also an exceptional producer and knows all of his stuff yeah fabulous <laughs> the old radio guys that, that aren't required anymore at radio <laughs> get them in <laughs> surplus to requirements now they've got old uh, Roman Kenton or Kempton or whatever it is oh, don't even don't even. <laughs> oh no <laughs> you see Neil I have to edit stuff out what can I say it has no, to go on that ego boosting note <laughs> don't, uh, don't edit that out <laughs> we won't we won't <laughs> 
Told you they were nice. Told you they knew what they were talking about. Told you they were clients of mine, didn't I, Neil? You did. They were lovely. Really, yeah. really lovely. I'm very impressed at your ability to pick really nice clients to work with. And you know, on a, on a serious note, I can definitely tell that they inspire you and that you're learning quite a bit from them, which is fantastic. I yeah, do learning relationship. Stuff, to be fair, you know, I always used to shy away from social media and social media is not my favourite thing now. But to be fair, just mm. producing their podcast and you know yourself, if you are um, it's, it's producing content and uh, editing content for those guys is so much more than just listening to it because you're listening yeah. to each and every word and exactly how it said and all of the messages and all of the all of the stuff goes in uh, yeah. to my brain and then something <laughs> happens with it and uh, no it is it is really useful and i've learned so much stuff by just producing their podcast it's called marketing Brilliant. made easy excuse me no it's not it's called marketing made easy uh, go and have Get a it listen right. to it it's fun it's good it's great Podcasting news. Apple is coming at it from the lens of a big corporation. I think it's harder for them to think about small independent shows that have so few people on staff. It's such a foreign concept to them. They're Apple. That's the opinion of a podcast manager of an independent show who's been bitching to The Verge magazine about why he thinks the world's most secretive podcast platform is getting it wrong with subscriptions and the app overall. Of course, he said he prefers to remain anonymous because of the sensitive nature of their relationship with Apple. All I've got to say on that is, don't worry, mate, they're never going to shag you. There's a link to the article in the show notes. It's the podcast you didn't ask for and didn't realise that you didn't want, yet they're giving it to you anyway. A team are looking into the disappearance of a road car. Okay, let's be real, there's more to it than that. The car in question is an Aston Martin DB5, and it was the one used to film Goldfinger. Yes, that Goldfinger. Either way, how they're managing to stretch that topic over more than one 30-minute episode is eluding me. But if you like the sound of it, you can check it out. It's called The Most Famous Car in the World. Oh, and it's hosted by Liz Hurley, in case you needed me to make you even less interested. If you enjoyed the previous episode of Follow, Review and Share's Bants about the British Podcast Awards, then you might enjoy an article from my fellow attendee, Miranda Sawyer. She's a podcast critic who writes for The Guardian. Some people think she has some credibility, and those people will probably enjoy reading something she's put together. A very clickbaity article entitled, Why Indie Podcast? are in peril. You'll undoubtedly be unsurprised to learn the article contains the usual conjecture and guessing that other articles of this nature contain, i.e. it doesn't really offer any evidence of that, other than twisting the words of some bloke from Amazon, who still doesn't actually go as far as to say that indie podcasts are in peril, just that he thinks that podcasts, for podcasting's sake, will probably disappear. Which, to be honest, any half-baked podcast influencer who spent more than 10 minutes reading about podcasting would probably also tell you. I want a shout out to James Bishop at One Fine Play, who's launched a new product. A SAS, I think the cool kids are calling it these days. Sounds like a decent idea, actually. It's a pitch deck, so you can get sponsors dribbling with arousal over the idea of spending their hard-earned cash on sponsoring or advertising on your podcast. Find out more from James directly. He's on... Oh, just click the link in the show notes. Podcast Ponderings. I just want to say a massive thank you to uh, all those wonderful listeners who downloaded and listened from the very first episode which we released a few weeks ago now of follow review and share we had lots and lots of amazing feedback so thank you so much for that obviously we had loads of great feedback on it but you did you did you sound a bit sad because of the um because of the sound quality neil it's fair to say i mean this is this is the elephant in the room is it not right now yeah I mean, to say I was massively disappointed with the recording software that we used for the first episode would be an understatement. It, it wasn't good enough. And it, it, to be honest, you know, that was the thing was I, I, I struggled really getting my head around it because it just ruined it for me. But although it was a great episode, you know, you were brilliant. <laughs> but I can't overlook me being the weak link, really. And, and you know, it, 
I, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say it wasn't my fault and play victim because, you know, we all know that we should be making, you know, more, more attempt to, yeah, <laughs> you know, make sure that the audio is recording okay and stuff. But like when you've recorded it and you've committed and you, you're confident in a company that, that are going to do what they say they can do and then it just doesn't happen, it does upset you a little bit. Thanks, Encaster. <laughs> I, I got to say, though, I can't fault their support team. You know, I, I was moaning about it on, on social media and I was talking to their support team through DM and stuff. And they were on it. They, you know, they did their best to go into the dashboard and have a look and see what happened. And they they didn't really give me a, a real answer as to or a solution as to what was causing it. They were trying to make out it was something to do with echo cancellation. But, yeah, it wasn't because that was absolutely activated and they were trying to make out that I hadn't activated it. But to me, anyway, having used Zoom in the past and hearing how the echo cancellation completely ruins the audio quality on that, I don't think that that's a really good thing for them to be drawing attention to anyway, if I'm honest, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. It, it was one of those things, it just wasn't really that good enough, to be honest. And so I'm just really excited for when Libsyn, who have acquired Orcs Bus, and Rob has been telling me on a quite regular basis, don't worry, Neil, because you're going to be able to use Orcs Bus to record, follow, review, and share really soon. And Orcs Bus is going to be brilliant because it's going to be audio only. And it's literally, it's like that. You had one job thing. They're not worrying about the video side of it. It's just going to be high quality, high fidelity audio. So I can't wait for that. We'll be using Using that definitely. Do you know? I've always been a big fan of Zencaster. I've got clients who are on Zencaster, clients who use Zencaster on a regular basis, and I'd say that over the last eighteen months, I'd say they've developed a lot of stuff and added that video angle, but they appear to have lost some of the audio advantage that they once had. Um, yeah. And, do you know, it's it's not... You did mention the perfectionist thing, and we're podcast producers. We like audio to sound good, right? Mm. I mean, there are podcast listeners who really don't care, and there are podcast listeners who will judge you massively on it. There are podcast listeners who don't really know what's what, but... If it sounds good, they have that perception that you know what you're doing, but they've not really identified that it sounds good. Anyway, Zencaster, a year, 18 months ago, sounded absolutely fine to me. I wasn't having any issues with any client audio. Mm. But at the moment, there just appears to be a little bit of an issue where there's any kind of um, talk over. And I'm not talking about people talking over one another because that's never going to sound good. But just at the end of a sentence, if there's a laugh or a giggle or whatever, then there appears to be some digital noise. And, and, you know, like you say, you reported that to Zencaster. They said, well, that shouldn't happen. I don't know what your setup is, Neil. I don't know what's going on there. But it's, you know, as far as the audio I'm getting from my clients, it's the same kind of issue that we're getting. And I, I don't understand yeah. how um, when you say something is locally recorded. Now, we're recording this locally right now, and this will sound absolutely fine. Um, when you say you're recording locally, you're going to get the best quality possible. Um, Zencaster and Riverside as well record locally and then upload to a cloud and you download it. So I yeah. can't for the life of me work out what's going on with them at no. the moment or what's going on specifically with the, with Zencaster at the moment. I don't get it. I can only imagine it's something to do with their recent additions in video. No, absolutely. And, and you know, that's, that for me is the thing. It's a fundamental. Like If you're going to offer a product that can do this thing that you're saying it can do, which is recording it locally and making sure that the audio gets uploaded to the cloud in record quick time so that you can use it in a very real and productive way for things like podcasts, then it really should be able to do that. If, if that's not what it's doing, if it is like Zoom recording in the cloud in a slightly delayed, you know, on a slight delay in order to get the audio there quickly enough then say that say this is like zoom it's cloud-based recording and there's another product as well which it does essentially the same thing but you know you if you dial out to if you hang up the call too quickly your audio's lost now how is that workable how can that be a reliable product to use for any kind of content creation it just it just isn't workable so for me all I've seen so far is Riverside is probably the closest to getting this stuff right that I've seen so far. So we're getting to the stage with things like this where you might as well use Zoom because at least that's reliable. You know, you, you, yeah, it's not great quality, 
it is pretty bad, actually. And I would always advise anybody, if they're doing a podcast, not to use Zoom. But it's hard to argue when, you know, people are sort of going, well, hang on a minute. At least we know it's recording and we can rely on it. Yeah, absolutely. But what I'd always suggest, if you're going to use Zoom, then I would suggest always running a local record on your on, on Audacity, on Audition, or whatever you happen mm. to be using to record things locally, and then just marrying it up, and then you've got quality stuff, yeah. and you're just using Zoom to monitor each other, and your listeners are never going to hear that Zoom audio. It's just easy to do it that way, yeah. if you've got a little bit of time to put into post-production, of course. Absolutely. And, and if you don't then make it. <laughs> That's what I would always say. I think essentially what we're saying is, you know, Zencaster, yeah, they're great. As far as product development's concerned, they're always yeah. developing, they're always expanding. And yeah. as you do that, there can be bumps in the road. And yeah. if there happen to be bumps in the road for you, what they're going to do is they're going to respond very quickly because their customer service is great. And I'm sure the product will be great for you in time. Yeah. Follow, review and share is sponsored by Libsyn. So tricky episode number two continues all about marketing. And, you know, you can have the best podcast in the world. It can be perfectly produced. It can be brilliantly hosted. But if you're not marketing it, nobody knows about it. And you deserve to tell people about it. Okay, we've already heard from Anna and Anita from Get Savvy Club, their Marketing Made Easy podcast. And now, Neil, we've got Dan on. Dan is an absolute legend and, you know, him and his brother, they run this company called Knowlton. And most of us, what we're doing when we get a new podcast, not you and IP, obviously, because we know what we're doing. But, you know, most people, when they start a new podcast, they'll go into every single group there is on Facebook. They'll go onto every social media platform and they'll just post the link to their show. And they're just hoping people are going to click on it when they're not really identifying that what's in it for me factor. And what Dan and his brother Lloyd are doing with their brilliant podcast called Business Anchors is they're sort of thinking, right, well, what is in it for the listener? How can we entice people to listen to our podcast? So hopefully you'll get a good takeaway or two from this this chat that I had with Dan about what they're doing with their podcast, how they approach it and what their intended goal is to get those people listening. Dan, I, I'm just shocked to see you without your wig, mate. I mean, what's going on? You didn't, you didn't. I didn't get up. the memo. I know. I didn't get the memo. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that idea come from? I mean, before we get into what Knowlton's about, I mean, you've, you've, you, to say you've come from humble beginnings is probably an understatement, but just sort of talk us through, you know, what the wigs and all that, you know, where did that come from? So, so I'll try and make this a short story. We started producing lots of content six years ago to try and drive business for our marketing agency. For a year, there was pretty much tumbleweed and we were just trying to copy other what other people did. And then in 2017, we came up with this crazy idea. We wanted to produce a testimonials video showing a video showing our customers saying nice things about us, but we knew that's going to be super boring. So we thought, how can we actually make this interesting? And we came up with this weird concept of actually getting clips of our customers talking about working with us. That's the kind of normal bit. But then we thought, let's dress up as characters pretending to be our own customers. And Wigs was how we portrayed different characters. We posted that video. And at the time, we got like three 3,000 views, 100 comments. And that was basically viral for us at the time. And that was the moment where we were like, we're onto something here. So that's how, that's how the Wigs started. So I'm guessing from that story alone, it would be fair to say you're a bit of a proponent. So at least in the origins, a uh, proponent for just get it done. Don't overthink it. Just just do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're, we're definitely big on that here at Knowlton. If we have an idea, we, we've kind of now got the resources to just say, let's try it. And I think marketing as a whole is all about trying and testing different things. And if 90% of them fail, that's fine because that helps us learn one thing that worked and then we can build on that. And we're always trying and testing different things like our podcast. You know, that was a test for us a year ago or a year and a half ago. And now it's one of our biggest revenue generators. So yeah, we're, we're big on that. Have you always been confident on camera? No, no, definitely not. If you think some of the early days used to stand in front of it and suddenly I couldn't get a sentence out. <laughs> and it is weird. And we see it with clients as well. So some videos, you know, you, they, they're talking to you completely confidently and you're thinking like, oh, what a great personality to be on camera. You're going to come across so well. Like a camera you, in front of them. You, yeah, put, get them to sit down. Different put, person. Put a light in front of them and then they go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I don't know why I did that. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, that's brilliant testimony to the power of a podcast. I was going to mention Business Anchors anyway. It is a great show. And, and I, I honestly, hand on heart, I hate to admit this because <laughs> I don't produce it. You're not one of my network customers. But I would honestly, if I was producing that show, I'd be shouting about it because it is so well done. It's a brilliant production. And, you know, you were talking about like getting on buses and stuff. And it's so relatable because you got yourself and, and Lloyd is your brother, of course, chatting about your backstories and all that sort of stuff. So I feel like I know you and yet I've got the benefit of knowing the theatrics that can go into making a podcast. So in terms of how you know that it's a big revenue generator, can you talk us through sort of the process of, of how you're measuring that? Yeah, it's pretty simple. I'm sure there's more technical ways of doing this. But we we use HubSpot sales and CRM system so that all of our leads that come in, we create a deal in our in our sales funnel. And every every lead that comes in, I do the initial call or Zoom call or meeting. And one of the questions I always ask is, how did you find out about us? And I'm one of the, yeah, so so in the last year, there's probably been two two significantly large deals that have allowed us to hire another six or seven people. And the decision maker who we pitched to who who decided to work with us when i there's actually quite a funny story so when i i got on this sales call with a marketing manager for this company i, w I won't reveal all the details the names and things just because we're still working with them but they said oh um we we interested in working with you and then we went away and developed a pitch and then we got on a, a pitch with their md and as soon as the call opened in zoom you know like when people join the room yeah. He, we we recently did an episode about Lloyd losing four million pounds worth of Bitcoin, and he just went. So has Lloyd found the Bitcoin, and I was like, "What?" And he he just had been listening to every episode since we started the podcast and absolutely loved it. And and he was just like, "Yeah, that's how I found out about you listening to that episode." And I was just like, "Wow, this this stuff actually works." <laughs> I love that. That's such a, and it goes to show that people do, you know, it is like a soap, isn't it? It's like you're, you're breaking down the back. Cause obviously everyone that's following your LinkedIn, they'll know you for the odd inspirational post about where you and your brother started out in your mum's basement, basically and <laughs> built your company from that, which to be honest, it's just a wonderful, wonderful story. Mm. Go Indies. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's that. And then it's like, obviously the funny videos where you're taking the piss out of the Silip Bang commercials and all that <laughs> yeah. stuff, which I just love and the wigs. But you know, what we get to see is we get to see the real you and get to follow mm. you through the podcast and the stories that you're telling. How big a difference do you think the like? Obviously, you're measuring mm. that the podcast is bringing you revenue generation. For those that are sort of on the fence about starting a podcast for their branding, what different? How big a difference maker do you think it's been? Huge. I think that the, the most common thing we hear is when getting on sales calls, literally revenue generating opportunities. They say, "I feel like I already know you." And this is because what a, what the podcast has done for us. So, so just to give you a bit brief backstory, we've tried lots of different types of content. A lot of the content we used to produce was me talking to camera, delivering in a very kind of structured, scripted way. Hello, hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can grow your following on Twitter. That that kind of thing. Whereas the, the podcast that we uh, record and shoot video content for it, it allows us to not be so structured and, and it allows us to get our personalities across. And obviously I do the podcast with my co-host, who's my brother, who I've known for 29 years and we've been taking the piss out of each other for that long. And we, it just, someone, people always say like the dynamic between us really sh sort of gets our personalities across, if that makes sense. There's no act, there's no, you know, we're not trying to be anything. We're literally just being ourselves and it's, it's given us that format to be able to do that. And that also helps build trust, right? One of the biggest parts of actually getting new customers is people trusting you. And I think what that's done to us is it's broken down those walls of us being very formal and delivering to camera for people to actually go, oh, actually, do you know what? I can tell they're being themselves and I can. And, and it also, it, it attracts just as many people as it repels because the people who don't align with us and, you know, yes, we, you know, we take the piss and we're not very corporate and that kind of thing. The people who are into that they won't become customers. And that's fine because what we then do is attract more of the right people who really resonate with our kind of message and values. 
It's great for pre-qualifying people, isn't it? I mean, it's literally that that there's a there's a really well known guy on LinkedIn, Marcus Sheridan, who uh, I don't know if you're aware of him. He wrote a book called "They Ask You they Answer." They Ask You Answer, yeah. It's just brilliant, and it's the same idea that you're going for there. That you're essentially what you're doing is you're you're saying to your ideal customer, "We're here," but you're also you're also laying the groundwork for those stuffy sort of people that sort of want to turn up in their tweed jackets. You're like, "Yeah, you're not for us." You know, good luck, best of luck for you, but no, yeah. not for us. It's also it's also difficult to kind of BS like in in a conversation where you're he's going back and forth like something scripted is very easy to script you know an answer that you've researched and whereas when we're when we our podcast there there's points we want to talk about but it's not scripted so at any point I could say to Lloyd why do you think that like give me an example of where that's you know helped one of our clients and and then it's very you know it's not scripted so you can really see that we know our stuff or we don't and when we don't know an answer to something we'll be very open to be like i literally have no idea about that i probably should <laughs> but i don't know and then it, it makes it more kind of authentic you know i love that what i want to talk about a little bit is because one of the biggest obstacles i think for most people that want to start a podcast whether for a hobby or for their business time how do you get around that by scheduling the time to do it. <laughs> I think something we, I know it sounds really like a basic answer, but about two years ago, yeah, it was about two years ago, we really struggled with finding the time to produce any content. This was pre-podcast. And we were like, oh, how are we going to have the time for marketing and stuff? So what we decided was every Thursday, we were going to schedule a whole our whole Thursday to, we called it Content Thursday, where we pretty much, <laughs> it's pretty basic, right? It's still in our calendar as Content Thursday, where we we use that time to plan, produce, and edit all of our content for every week. And, you know, when a client calls and says, can we have a call Thursday? We do everything to not have a call Thursday. And, and any like, client work goes to one side. And making us, uh, and, and scheduling that time has enabled us, and well, it's helped us grow and hire another, you know, six or eight people in the last two years because we've made the time to do it. So my mm. simple piece of advice, which everyone will go, oh yeah, whatever, is literally schedule up the time in your calendar to do it. And that's really worked for us. I think that's amazing. And you know what? I actually, I hold my hat up to you because even myself, you know, I do this for a living. This is my full-time occupation. And even I don't find time for my own podcast. So I'm actually going to follow your advice myself. I'm going to have a content Thursday as well. Might make it a bit more li- illiterate though. I might call it, well, something that rhymes with Thursday. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But anyway, we'll, we'll get that. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of something really good then, but I couldn't either. I know, isn't it funny? When you're on the spot, you just can't do it. That's obviously why we do this this sort of stuff one to ones, professionally structured. For those that 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 are podcasting that you've seen, obviously, you know, you've got two hats now because you've gone from being obviously marketing genii, um, and now you're almost, you know, I think it's fair to say you're podcasting genii. There's not much that I could offer you in terms of of advice and direction. No, we're we're pretty much winging it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so modest i love it as well well you know what do you think most people from what you've seen what you've observed what would you say is maybe the top three things that you've seen people getting wrong with their podcasts i'd say the thing that and this is very much personal opinion so this is just my from my experience the thing that i think makes a podcast bad is when people aren't aren't themselves and it doesn't it doesn't feel like they're it feels like they're holding back so a lot of podcasts and this this frustrates me a bit especially in marketing a lot of the top ranked podcasts every week are like very practical here's here's how here's three steps to grow your tiktok following here's you know mm. and it's, it's very and i just think that's so boring and and you know you, you know they must there's a lot of people that like those because it helps them learn and then they're value adding but the the podcast that I really like like the diary of a CEO, which is my favorite podcast ever is where people it's not so, you know, here's three steps to do this. It's talking about your experiences and being honest and, and sharing real insights into things I'm interested in, like the business world, rather than that very scripted value adding. I don't know what you think. Do you think, do you prefer the, the podcasts that aren't so sort of just step-by-step value adding or do you like a, a combination? 
I one of the things I encourage all my podcasters to do, and some of them are a bit less, you know, some of them are a bit resistant to it because obviously then it's pushing them out of their comfort zone. It's to bring themselves, bring a bit more personality. I totally agree with you. I think you know, obviously the value add has to be in there, otherwise, what's the point of listening? But I think if you contain it almost like a cake. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice visual for those of us that aren't audio or kinesthetic. Mm. Um, you know, if, if you layer it inside personality, I think that really makes a difference. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I also think something else that is a real turn off for me with podcasts is when a podcast just sounds like everyone else's podcast. I think a lot of, a lot of the podcasts out there are just copycats of the top 10. So I think the thing that again, stands out is is making it unique to you by bringing your personality, which is why what we try and do with the Business Anchors podcast, you know, this is why a core part of uh, our, how we come up with concepts is ensuring, do we have enough good stories to tell about this topic? That personal stories like, oh, this one time when we were doing this, this happened, rather than just very, just, just sharing information. Because just, just sharing information can maybe value adding, but it's not going to keep people listening. Like it is way more efficient to read a step-by-step article than listen to someone reel off 10 steps in your ears. You know, it's, it's just an impractical way of learning things. So yeah, I think that's another one, trying to be a bit unique and bringing your personality. But it is easier said than done. It's easy for me to sit here and say, bring more of your personality in. But I guess, I don't know, like, well, how would you, how would you help someone get more of their personality across rather, other than just saying, Get your personality across. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's difficult. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Challenging. I think it comes down, though, doesn't it, Dan, to the fact that if you don't have the personality for podcasting, then you probably shouldn't be podcasting. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Other things that you could do. You could write a blog post or, you know, I think the, the important thing, you know, there does seem to be a bit, I don't know if you agree with me on this from a marketing point of view, you're the expert on this, but I do think there seems to be this sort of pressure now that it, because it's the new exciting platform, mm. podcasting, uh, it's obviously survived Clubhouse and all the pretenders <laughs> to the throne. And, and it's almost like, right, we need to do a podcast because we need to get our message out mm. there. But the point is, if you're going to do a crap podcast, then there's no <laughs> point because you're going to yeah. do damage to your brand. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, oh, totally. It's, it is everyone's jumping on that bandwagon. I think you need to have you need to have a good, unique idea. Like you need to think about what, how is our podcast different to everyone else's? What what could we what, cause yeah, there is so many bad podcasts out there. The amount I've kind of just listened to the first few seconds and I've been like, oh no, this is just the same <laughs> as everyone else's. I hope they yeah. don't have pod- those podcasting attached to them on the, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be awkward. Yeah. <laughs> So in terms of then, for, for anybody that sort of, you know, is listening to this, they're likely to be thinking about podcasting or already podcasting. What's the number one bit of advice that you could give them for how to get attention for their brand and how to be unique? So I'll kind of break down how we strategically come up with podcast ideas and that kind of thing because I think this is really the first step you need to think about what first of all what are you trying to achieve from this podcast what is that objective that you want and and most people I'm just preempting this here but most people are probably using it as a, it as a tool to drive business right ultimately they're not just doing it for fun some people do but you know ultimately they want to to use it as a tool to drive business so so if that is your objective into, and, and this is our objective we really focus on a few key things when coming up with podcast ideas. The first is to ensure that you can talk about something that's actually interesting. You know, like if you're an accountant talking about spreadsheets, probably isn't that interesting. Whereas if you talked about, you know, this crazy thing that this accountant did that caused an uproar in the industry, that's probably a lot more interesting. So trying to think about interesting things within your kind of space to talk about And then also trying to think strategically. So just talking about interesting stuff isn't going to generate that much business. What you need to do is cleverly uh, and subtly talk about things that demonstrate how good you are at your job. And this is what we do. So, so, So we talk, the way we come up with podcast topics, we think about interesting things that are going on in our business that we can talk about. 
And then we think about what examples of like client campaigns can we tie in with that? You know, so when we're talking about these these things like, oh, last week we went to Newcastle and we've been doing more networking recently, which is really helpful for our business. And when we went to Newcastle, we met these two guys called Andrew and Pete, who we've recently done a campaign with. And this campaign, we did all these cool things and, and actually add value. And it, it's subtly selling what you, what you do. Um, and you need to hit those two points. It needs to be interesting enough for people to listen to, but you also need to be thinking more strategically as how is this going to help me drive revenue? you know, And how is it going to be relevant to the decision makers we want to reach? So our, the decision makers we want to reach are marketers from big brands. So whenever we're developing concepts, we're thinking, will a marketer from Adidas or will, a, will the CMO from Nike be interested in this episode? And that we have to tick, we have to make sure that we're ticking that box when we're coming up with that. And that, that's super important because you need that strategic direction. Otherwise, we're just talking about stupid stuff on a podcast that people <laughs> might like, but it doesn't help drive revenue. <laughs> that's absolutely spot on. So I take it then there was a certain amount of strategy sort of when you launched your podcast, there was a certain amount of thought that went into it in terms of who your ideal listener would be and how you would get that ideal listener sort of, you know, to engage with your space. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, one of the key things is like how are we actually going to get people to listen to it, which sounds really basic, but we had this brilliant idea for this podcast that we thought, oh, this sounds good, but how are we going to drive listeners to it? And there was a few few key things we did. So one of the things we did was think about, right, where do we currently have an audience? So for example, LinkedIn is probably one of the main, one of our biggest, most engaged audiences of decision makers who we want to become customers. So we thought, right, we can't just post an audio clip on on LinkedIn. So let's think about how we can do this. So we thought, right, let's let's record the podcast on video, make it make it better looking, better quality than any other podcast that we've seen, or you know, the, the top podcast. Let's do that. And then let's let's record the whole thing and then let's let's take the most interesting clips to of, of us talking about an interesting part. And when we're when we're planning the podcast, we always think about what can we talk about that's very hooky, like a, a hook into the episode that we could think all oh, people like it, like wet people's appetite to to want to listen to the full podcast. So we share that little snippet that, that's hopefully the most intriguing. And then we share a link to the full podcast through Chartable, which I think you showed me their smart link thing. That That's a really cool kind of tool that we use and then we also so another place so we've got an email newsletter called the friday club and we already know we have a highly engaged audience there of of our target market so every week we share a link to the podcast there and we do a competition where we give away a bottle of wine every week and to enter the competition you have to listen to the podcast and answer a weird question that i ask in the email so there's kind of like these these other, and you know, we share it on other social platforms. We also talk about it when we're on other podcasts like this, <laughs> which you probably <laughs> noticed me talking about it. So there's a few kind of key pillars that we focus on in terms of how we're going to get act- actual listeners. And then the other part is making sure the podcast is actually good, which is that strategic part we've kind of already spoken about. They're the two key things we focus on, get people to listen to it, and then also make it good enough for them want to want to listen to more episodes. So do you think then, Dan, with that in mind, with obviously you've got your wine um, prize that you associate with with listening and, and that reward aspect, do you, do you think that's something that people should do to get traction initially? Or is that just something that, you know, you don't really need to, but you've just decided to? I think it's one small thing of many that they should do. Because, you know, what works for us isn't necessarily going to work for you. My advice would be to try lots of things, <laughs> you know, and when, when we started out, we've tried a variety of things at one, when we started, we were told, and when we had no idea about podcasting, I think we were told that the more regularly you post your, your con, your podcast, sorry, the more downloads you're going to get, and it's going to help you get ranked and that kind of thing. I don't know. You you can tell me this is wrong after maybe, I don't know, but we, we basically split our episodes into part one and part two so that we could post an episode every week. Eventually, that worked okay, but then our downloads started going down. So we we thought, let's mix this up. So then we do, every two weeks, we recorded two episodes. So rather than two parts, it was two separate topics. And then every week now, we have an episode going out. Something we've been thinking about doing, which I'd love to get your advice on, (laughs) is (laughs) we noticed that... um, the Diaries of a CEO, my favorite podcast, that always ranks in the top business podcast in the UK, he now puts these moments out. So these short, so between episodes, he puts sh- short snippets. He, co- he, he kind of very clearly says this is a moment, so you know it's not an episode, of the, the highlights from other episodes so that he's got more 
podcast kind of clips going out more regularly. We haven't started that yet, but I literally wrote in Slack yesterday to the team, let's try this. But I don't know what you think. Do you think that's a good idea or not? Or maybe you don't know. I don't know. So uh, what I would say is it won't hurt. I, I think the re- let's let's break down Stephen Bartlett then his podcast Diary of a CEO. Why is that so successful? So I think you know a big factor that people forget, and this is what a, a big sort of challenge for a lot of podcasters, certainly the new ones, is oh wow that podcast is always at number one in the chart. Now first of all, being in the chart is not indicative of your show success at all. Let me make that really clear. However, it kind Kind of parallels with, you know, how successfully it's doing in the right way. So, for example, if your show is getting in the chart, it means people are listening to it and they are following. That's essentially what you're looking for. What things like moments that he's doing will do is is getting the listeners used to seeing content there all the time. So even if someone follows your podcast they're still only going to listen to it when they go into their app because they're expecting your show there. However, if every time they go in to listen to one of their other podcasts that they like listening to, if they then see that you've got content in there, they're much more likely to go, oh, there's extra content. I'll listen to that. And of course, what that then does is it encourages, number one, it encourages the algorithms in the apps to go, this is a successful show. We should probably put it higher in search discovery. But secondly, what it also also does is if the show is being subscribed to and followed in the apps and then therefore it gets higher in the search results what that then means is other people that aren't yet subscribed are going to find it because obviously the other people that are listening are pushing it up there so you know it's it's like you say with marketing it's not one answer cures all but it is something that's well worth doing if you've got the time i would always say yeah absolutely to any show bonus content it's one of the cheapest forms of advertising for your podcast Absolutely. That's really, really interesting. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. <laughs> um, and so I'm really interested. What would you do to improve our podcast? Oh, <laughs> Putting you on the spot here. <laughs> that is brilliant. Do I'm here know, to get value. I, I think, honestly, uh, there's not much. I mean, the, the one or two suggestions that I've had, I've already told you. I think the only thing that I would maybe do differently if it was me is maybe change it up a little bit in terms of how you are using the code. So for example, we've already talked about the reverse engineering process that you've gone through where you say in our heads, before we start recording it, we know the bit of tidbit we're going to use to then use as a social media promo. I would maybe experiment on different days We've done this actually on one of the podcasts that that we make at Podnose, Wendy's, Making Conversations Count. What we did was we experimented a little bit with releasing our promos on Mondays, then changing it to Tuesdays, then the Wednesdays, and then doing different types of promos. I think for me... It's almost like listening to the content yourself a couple of days later. This is something I I tell all podcasters to do. When your content has gone out there, don't let it rest and forget about it. Go back to it maybe a week later, maybe a month later. And listen like a listener, because when you're, it's the mindset you're in. When you've recorded it, you're thinking like a producer. Whereas if you've forgotten about it, and you come back, you're listening like a listener. And therefore, different things are going to stand out at you. So for example, with that one I I listened to recently, you had a a bit of your episode and I said, you need to turn this into an audiogram because this is great content. It's things like that that will really start to stand out. So my my advice that I would give you would be maybe sort of start getting people around your office to suggest what they might put out as relevant content for them, what they found really interesting. And then maybe, rather than doing sort of the, the whole shebang video element, maybe just whack an audiogram out, put a bit of imagery out there, or you know, or or maybe even write what you're you've talked about as a transcript and put that as a post. Mm-hmm. That would be maybe in terms of the marketing, what I might do. In terms of the content itself, there's not much really that you can do. I think it's great. I think, you know, that the 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 producer at the beginning because what you have is you have a guy that goes this is uh, patrick is it the producer the podcast editor yeah <laughs> <laughs> and he's introducing you and i think that's a brilliant idea because yeah. it, it actually it allows you to then come in as the big stars and the number one bit of advice I've, I've always given to anybody is you know you are a star 
you may only be a star to the 100, 1,000, 10,000 people that you have listening to your podcast, but they're looking up to you and therefore you're a star. So anything you can do to make other people a star. So whether it be someone in the office or, you know, someone that answers the phones for you, makes the coffee, just pops into your office to say, hi, guys, I like (laughs) wet the wigs. Great. Turn your audience into stars is what I would oh, say. That's really good advice. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. Not I'm definitely going to try some different approaches to promoting the podcast. Like you said, the audiograms and, and transcribing and that kind of thing. Uh, pitch me like you've never pitched before. Uh. So this is the part of the show where, Dan, I'm going to ask you, you've got 60 seconds, okay? And there's a countdown timer. You can hear that, can't you? There it goes. Do you hear it? Hey. Um, You've got 60 seconds now to tell anybody listening why they might, if they're looking to promote their business with some marketing, why they need to get in touch with you. Do I start now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's already so, been <laughs> so most marketing is rubbish. Most marketing is focused around selling a product or service and people turn off when they see it. If you think about when you're watching TV and an advert comes on, what do you do? You switch off, you look at your phone at something more interesting. What we do is make marketing that your potential customers get excited to consume. We educate, we entertain, we inspire. And we've worked with some of the biggest brands in the world, like Wall, FIFA, Eurotunnel, Nestle. And we've done it for them. And we've got brilliant case studies to show how we've generated hundreds of thousands of pounds for the campaigns we've run. So yeah, you should work with us. (laughs) <laughs> I love it. That was brilliant. That wasn't even 60 seconds. You're obviously, oh, okay. you've been to lots of networking meetings, haven't you? <laughs> Practice my 60 seconds, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, Dan. Listen, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge. Real good wisdom in there. Uh, the Business Anchors podcast, available on all apps. And, you know, what, what, what can we expect? Just sort of summarize it in a sentence, I guess, what we're going to be hearing. It's two brothers talking about growing a business together, the weird and wonderful things that happen along the way, embarrassing stories, funny stories, and also lots of practical advice. It's the kind of, it's the only business podcast you'll want to listen to at the weekend. Put it that way. Follow, review, and share is sponsored by Libsyn. It's time to get the skinny from our podcast global community correspondent, Stephanie Fuccio. I mean, in terms of your, why we've asked you to come on this show, like I said, you are so instrumental in the community. Well, give us sort of a, a headline point, what you would like to raise for this episode, because I know that you are across all these issues. You you are always on, you know, different talks. I see you popping up left, right and center in different podcast influencer spaces. So, you know, you definitely are the person to ask about you know what the big burning issues are so have you got anything that you want to get off your chest Steph because this is your chance this is your platform <laughs> <laughs> well, speaker's corner <laughs> honestly I, my biggest bone of contention always is the lack of globalness in podcasting it drives me insane Leo, let me ask you this when you're making your podcast either for your clients or for yourself do you think of hmm who in the world is going to listen to this Yes and no is the honest answer to that because mm-hmm. usually we're we're doing it with a very specific targeted listener in mm-hmm. mind. However, that doesn't mean that there isn't some crossover that say for example, you know, somebody might be listening in Tunisia or somebody else mm-hmm. in New Zealand or somebody else in even in a third world country. Mm-hmm. You know, that we're not we're not bearing that in mind when we're recording it necessarily, but mm-hmm. we are mindful of, you know, how they might might receive that content mm-hmm. being mindful how i know where you're going with this <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably a few different episodes that we could do right because there's different things you can do even if it's not whatever is in the actual content when you record it there's different things you can do with your show notes with your bit rate and like all these different things to make it easier for people around the world to consume it and sure. these are things that i notice are not talked about are not very often, are not done, are not considered, are not put in our workflows and those kinds of things. And it kind of drives me crazy. Something as simple as as listing time zones on live events, listing times without any time zone indicator. If somebody's outside of your local time zone, how do they even know how to convert that if you don't have like a, a UTC or a GMT or anything like that? Like they don't even know how to convert it because there's just there's no location. It's just a time. So it's just something as simple, as tiny as simple as that. 
it just it doesn't even matter which indica- time indicator you use, but let people know. Even put a city. I put cities because because I'm like I can't even think of what in what time indicator I'm in right now. <laughs> okay, I'm just like I'm in Berlin. There, just factor it from there, kind of thing. So just knowing that there are people that might be listening to you if you're doing a live a live podcast event that are in other places. You don't have to cater to them. You don't have to list every city, but just let them like make it accessible so that they know where you are so they can convert from there. So just tiny things like that. It's it's all about attention to detail, I guess, then, isn't it? It's about considering, you know, what little things that you think might not necessarily be important for your listener. However, mm-hmm. it's, you know, you've got to think wider, I suppose. And, and can you know, another thing that, that really sort of it does strike me, actually, is the lack of consideration that's given to, you know, making sure that the show notes, for example, like mm-hmm. what a really nice added touch might be to have a translation. Mm-hmm. Things like Ooh, that. That's hard. Yeah, it is. And, you know, unless you're a native speaker, like anybody can go on Google Translate and, and stick in some show notes. Oh, though, and, you know, oh, oh the there's, would, <laughs> there's a huge potential for not only it being translated wrong, but it being offensive. So I don't even know that I would do that. <laughs> um, having, ha- However, thing. having some sort of form of transcripts, uh, but that's a different accessibility issue entirely. Um but having something where they can see the the transcripts, whether it be just on YouTube, which is my, my version of the lazy way to do it, <laughs> but using tools like uh, AI tools like Descript and stuff to get it, you know, 80 or 90 percent of the way there. But just having different ways that people can consume it if they're not super fluent in the language. I mean, it extends who your listeners can be and it extends the conversation that you're having to those people with those people. <laughs> Of course, you know, a big factor in this and, you know, we, we were chatting earlier on, uh, Pete and I, about the fact that, you know, the editing takes time. Mm-hmm. Editing does take time. And, you know, I can understand both sides of it because, you know, if you've got to sit there and you've got to go through, you know, on average four hours of editing for an hour long mm-hmm. episode. Hopefully you're taking at least that when you're doing mm-hmm. your editing. But anyway, uh, again, another point for another episode. But, you <laughs> know, when you've got all these things that you got to consider, mm-hmm. it's that whole thing, then, isn't it? Of oh, am I going to really take the ex- you know another hour to mm-hmm. to do all these things? But I mean, you know, what would you say to somebody that's sort of trying to do everything on the cheap, maybe trying to do everything to scale, trying to uh, take as least amount of time over it as possible? Is it really that big an issue in the grand scheme of things, or you know, what do you think? What do you think the the, the community's take on that is? Well. I don't, I don't know the community's take, but my, what I keep, yeah, I do. I keep hearing people say, I want more listeners. I want more listeners. Well, make it so that you can have them. I've gotten very addicted to doing YouTube lives to record. And then boom, there's a form of kind of transcripts in there, right? Cause you've got the subtitles and then editing the podcast episode before sending that out with the show notes and a blog attached to it. And that's, that's something. It's not the best transcripts, quote unquote transcripts ever, but it's something. And it doesn't take more time because you're already recording. So just record like that. I don't know. That's just kind of like a simple thing. And honestly, right now I'm using the free service on StreamYard. So you don't even need to spend money on it. Yeah, I do like that. I I suppose. Yeah. Again, it's coming back, isn't it? To that whole thing about, you know, think smarter, you know, create a workflow Mm -hmm. that works for you mm-hmm. not the other way around sort of thing yeah no it's a i never even thought about the free stream yard thing and using youtube to get your transcripts mm-hmm. but it is, it's a real like you say nothing is a hundred percent but at least it's getting you up there to a point where you're offering some value to your listener mm-hmm. even in markets that you might not even be considering i, I like that i like that a lot Steph, and wor- worst case scenario youtube is the second biggest search engine boohoo so i mean there you go <laughs> Get your title nice and that should increase your exposure, right? Follow, review and share. No, I mean seriously, do that in your favorite app of choice. I just wanted to mention and touch on one of the big events that's happened in the world of podcasting in the last few weeks was Podcast Movement. This happened a few weeks ago in Nashville in the United States of America. One of the big announcements to come out of Podcast Movement was Libsyn mentioned they're doing a distribution partnership with Fireside. Now, if you're not 
aware of Fireside, Mark Cuban, the big entrepreneur that is Mark Cuban, has announced his own social voice app, much in the same way as Spotify, Green Room, and Clubhouse. Uh, this is Mark Cuban's app that he's launched. And uh, Libsyn, well, some exciting, interesting stuff going on there. Have you been across this, Pete, at all yourself? I haven't been across it as such, but I have registered for it for Fireside mm-hmm. Chat. And I've got a little teddy bear that's doing a little dance, and I'm being told <laughs> that when I'm off the wait list, I'll be informed. Um, yeah. So basically, at the moment, it is basically, it's a um, an invitation-only thing, like Clubhouse was, and it's yeah. just to build that uh, that fun and that excitement and, and that, that initial sort of... Uh, PR thing that Buzz. obviously Clubhouse did. Mm. Uh, what's it going to be? I don't know. Is it mm. going to be a Clubhouse where, like you say, at the push of a button, you can upload to Libsyn, you can upload to your podcast host. I presume it's something like that so that it's listen again rather than just live. Um, that's my understanding of what it's going to be. But I haven't, I haven't got an inside track here, I'll be honest. I'm kind of just guessing. Yeah, and I'm the same, to be honest. I mean, I've I've heard uh, Rob Walsh, the VP of uh, Relations, uh, Customer Relations, let's be very specific, otherwise we're going to make <laughs> Rob sound very dubious. He's <laughs> sort of mentioned it a couple of times on other people's podcasts. And from, I mean, they're still playing their cards very tightly to their chest, as they often do, Libsyn. They're a very secretive company, and, you know, they're up to all sorts of amazing stuff behind the scenes, which we then find out about, you know, six months later. But it does sound like what they're trying to do is cure that problem, ease that problem that a lot of these social apps have of once the content's done, it's gone. And it sounds very much like what you've alluded to there, Pete, that, you know, the idea is that you use this fireside app for your live streaming stuff, for your live, you know, in the moment kind of content. And then essentially you can use Libsyn's infrastructure to put that content out and syndicate Mm. it via a more traditional syndicated RSS feed. So, yeah, it does sound really interesting. No, absolutely. But I think if this is what we suspect it to be, it's going to be a lot smarter because you're not going to, as a, in inverted commas, influencer, you're not going to have to spend four hours of your day on there talking, trying to attract people, and and then it's all lost. You can spend 20 minutes a day or 20 minutes a week on there, um, get your content right, and um, do it it for 20 minutes, uh, save it, hit publish, and then all of a sudden it's available on podcast apps. If that's what they're going for then it it's smarter isn't it for everybody for listeners and for and for performers for want of a better word well absolutely i mean there's nothing worse than sitting there as you say like four hours conservatively i i when i was in the early days of clubhouse and frequenting that app you know there were people in there and, and supposedly successful people that were pretty much on there all day and i'm talking you know first thing in the morning at 6 a.m i'd go on there and while i was having my breakfast chewing on my toast listening to these entrepreneurs from forbes and you know entrepreneur.com wanging on about all sorts of stuff like you need to invest in this and you need to invest in that and then you'd go in there at eight o'clock at night when you're cooking your dinner and they'd still be there and it'd be like how are you people making any money but yeah i think the idea is that with this at least it's going to give you an option to well essentially make that content a little bit more evergreen which is obviously the benefit that podcasting has been offering since day one and you know things like spotify green room and clubhouse just can't really compete with i know there's recording stuff but it's not quite the same yeah as soon as i've got rid of this dancing teddy bear and i've actually got access to the app i'll tell you all about it do you have a question for the guys or do you have something you want to share about podcasting pete and neil would love to hear from you Email the show now. Follow review share at gmail.com. So that was it, people. The second tricky episode of follow, review, and share. And I think it was all right. I think it was like, I mean, I'm not patting myself on the back, Neil. I'm patting you on the back, my friend. I'll pat you. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well done. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say I told you so, but I did tell you so. Didn't I tell you so? Oh, about the Zencaster thing. Yeah, we're not letting that go, are we? <laughs> That's going to become a running theme, I reckon, for a little while. What? <laughs> oh well. Um, yeah. What about? What are we doing today, Neil? Huh? <laughs> We're recording it locally. Anyway, oh. sorry, I'm not going to go on about this. It's the last. It's the last I'll say about it. I don't. Yes. I don't. Yeah. I, I, that's it. It's All done right. now. Okay. Follow, review, and share. Please do. Um, followers, please do review this podcast. Please do share this podcast as well. And 
And uh, please do listen to the next episode. Please do that. And thank you very much to Libsyn for being there. Yes, thanks, Libsyn. Love you, Libsyn. <laughs> we love you, Libsyn. <laughs> Follow, review, and share is sponsored by Libsyn. 